everybody I want to invite you to a funeral <laughs> if you saw the clip go by really fast there the title screen said it was a funeral to which they all came and some of you might recognize that it's, to me one of the greatest first lines of a book um, it's John Paul Vans and the Vietnam War and I wish I had my copy I loaned it to someone it's this thick um, it's a great book you should read it this isn't about that it isn't about wars a little bit it's about high school and it's about campuses like the one I just showed you it's very cliche to say high school can't be all for college anymore but what should it be and there's the problem as we talk about funerals there's another one these places um, this is a beautiful campus as far as I know. It, it's been here for 150, 60 some years. It'll probably still be here, although I bet you they have a lot of debt because just as I walked around there were buildings I didn't recognize from when I was here before, not that long ago. Um, a lot of campuses have a lot of debt and as you know, I'm filming this in the middle of the pandemic, no one's in any colleges, no one's in any schools, and no one knows what they'll be doing in the fall. I think things will be better than they, some people project, but some of these colleges were in trouble anyway. How does high school fit into that? Many ways. The way it doesn't fit is the way a lot of the remake, reinvent, re-engineer, redesign, <laughs> transform, personalized learning organizations and foundations want you to think that high school is going to be. That's what this video is about. Um, I, I want you to know that there's a positive vision coming out of this. It, 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 this isn't negative. It's not to tear these places, these places down. It's to ask for their help and to get them to see beyond the vision they're stuck in. So we're going to look at that a little bit. I'm going to try to make it as fast as possible. Um, but there's a lot going on, so please bear with me a little bit and we'll get through this. Cool. Let's get going. Okay, Sir Ken Robinson isn't totally a twit. He says some twitish things. Um, more importantly, he spawns a lot of other people to say twitish things. And, and that's, that's a lot of the problem. Listen to film this here in left field. <laughs> well short of the home run mark. <clears throat> Sir Ken's, I think it's 2008 TED Talk is why, why he's famous and, and still going today in, in education. And, and something of how I'm filming this today gives us a clue of why he's so far off, which is that everything I tried to do is going wrong. <laughs> I started this a week ago. Since we're in the middle of the pandemic, 
the locations I wanted to film at are closed. Winter has arrived, even though it's May 12th. <laughs> the wind is blowing, making background noise on this. <clears throat> Allergies have taken over my nose, as have the cold and wet weather, and I'm barely able to speak. I'm going to plunder on through, and that's what schools have to do all the time. The fact that they have to do that and push a million kids out the door each year in a whole host of different situations, different kids with different variables every minute of every day is why they need standardized things. It's just part of the deal. Does that mean we can't have more creativity? No, but it needs, means teachers need help. It means they can't invent everything every day. It means they can't spend two, three hours a night looking up curriculum on Pinterest or Facebook or Google. This building is the only swimming facilities here in my rural town. It's been closed for more than 15 years. It was built by a veterans organization. My dad was part of that and he ran it for a while. Then it was given to the schools and the schools ran it for a while. And then they abandoned it because they couldn't take care of it. This fence here is a tennis court, the only tennis courts in town. It was abandoned about the same time as the pool. All it needs is blacktop, but nobody has done anything with it. There's a playground in the distance in worse shape. Some of these because I've been to a number of ed camps, more than 20 now, um, which are really cool gatherings of teachers, uh, usually on a Saturday, but some days on a, on a professional development day. They draw from all around, the teachers come in, there's no set agenda, the teachers set the agenda. And for a day they discuss things that are of interest to whoever's there and, and they bring the resources that they have and they share. It's a great thing. I've been to one particular location a number of times. They have a swimming pool in the lower level of the building. It's a brand new building. It's gorgeous. It's in the middle of a very wealthy district and they can afford to host these things and plan them and draw in the teachers. And that's a lot that comes to these. And these are the people who tend to lead the conversation as we're talking about transforming schools. They have a little bit of a biased perspective toward the wealthy. Among other things at these gatherings, it's, it's very common for teachers to say, we don't have a curriculum. I don't need a curriculum. Um, or I wasn't given a curriculum. And again, that means they have to spend time coming up with their own curriculum. It doesn't work. And it's not a recipe for transforming high school. enough in a typical 12 to 1500 student school. But what about tiny schools like this one? So this is Design Lab High School in the center of the old industrial district of Cleveland. 